Hey guys, Coach Nate here from the Run Experience out on this beautiful run on this lovely ridge above my house. And I'm running and I'm loving it and it feels good and I want running to feel good for you too. So today, we're gonna go step by step how to set up running for yourself, a routine for yourself so that it doesn't hurt and uh, you can get really fit with it and you can enjoy it. We're gonna go through a few different things, but let's get started with what it means to be fit enough to run in the first place. Now, here's the deal. Running is this really awesome sport that can uh, be very incredibly enjoyable. It can make us really fit aerobically and it can develop some strength in those legs. But if we're starting from scratch, we don't really have a core level of fitness. Running is very painful and difficult because we just lack that strength. So what I love to start runners with is a mix of short runs with some strength thrown in. And just here's an example. We could start off, rather than just kind of trudge for 20 or 30 minutes, you're gonna do some intervals. You're gonna run for five rounds of 30 to 60 seconds. And then you're gonna mix that up with 10 air squats and five push-ups. And if I was gonna squat, my feet are gonna be about shoulder width stance, squeezing my belly and butt tight. And this kind of helps us get into our posture for running, which I'll talk about in a second. And I can start to think about really activating all these important muscles that are so important for running. So by pushing my hips back and initially I squat, I start to get in my hamstrings and my, my glutes pull myself down, I start to address a little bit of mobility, stand up tall, squeeze that belly and butt tight. I work on my 10 squats here, starting to develop that core strength and condition I need to support my running. Once I've done my 10 squats, I could get down onto the ground and I could work on five push-ups. Now, just when I get into this plank, all of a sudden I'm having to stabilize with my abs, my shoulders have to be very active, quads, belly and butt, everything has to be tight and engaged. Again. A lot of great core engagement that's going to support me when I'm standing up tall when I run. I can go ahead and pull myself down all the way to the bottom, hips and chest to the ground. If I need to, I could drop to my knees and press up here, or I can go from here. I'm only giving you five push-ups to start, but if you've done a lot of push-ups before, you can easily add that 10. So five rounds, 10 air squats, five to 10 push-ups and run 30 to 60 seconds. It's a great way to start things off. Once you feel really good about that, you can start to throw in some lunges and burpees next. Now, you're gonna learn pretty quick, especially if you stick with us, that slow jogging is not the best warm up for slightly faster jogging. It can feel terrible, especially if you've just woken up and your body's asleep or you're trying to run after you've your body's been jammed in a car or office step, your hips are stiff, your shoulders are hunched over, and this just doesn't lead to good running. So we wanna do a mini activation, a set of activation exercises. It could almost be like a mini strength exercise just to get our body, or mini strength workout, just to get our body open and ready. And some of my favorite things, in addition to the squats we just did, are gonna be some leg swings. So I'm gonna start up on this left leg. I'm gonna find some balance. I'm gonna to start to swing this leg slowly back and forth. And I'm gonna slowly start to kick this leg back a little bit further. Good. And if I've done a few of these, I could kick up, swing back into reverse lunge, drop down into reverse lunge, and then I could have a little lunge and a leg swing here. Do like five to 10 on one side, five to 10 on the other. The other thing I could do, just some arm circles. So I could start with my arms out here, slowly get these going a little bit larger, a little bit larger. Biceps way up in the ears, nice and big. And then I could go backwards the other direction. And this just is a great way to open up the shoulders, get those shoulders nice and loose, and then we get a little bit more active and engaged um, arm swing. And then finally, what I love to do are some hip circles. I love these for, well, opening up our hips, getting deep into our hamstrings, our, our glutes down here, just from being stiff. It's like half of our squat, if you think of you're working on improving this position and I can really get my hip flexors in the back and those just get so tight from sitting. So I can get 10 circles one direction and then I can get 10 circles the other way. And adding a little bit of movement, I can extend this leg back and forth a few times. You go ahead and switch sides. I'm literally doing this on the side of the road. I love these, I can do these anywhere. I might start with a little walk first or a little bit of running before I get into some of my dynamic exercises. So 
We have leg swings, we have those lunges, we've got those arm circles forwards and backwards, and then we have those hip circles. Literally, this whole routine can take no more than two minutes, but you will be blown away how much better your running will feel after you do these exercises and then uh, from before. Now, next thing we want to get into, guys, is how to make running just feel less boring just by trudging all the time, by mixing it up and playing some games. Now, with practice, eventually you're going to be able to run 30 minutes, 45, 60 minutes, two hours continuous without any type of break, and you will enjoy it. But in the beginning, it is really mentally arduous and difficult. Um, so let's not do it. So what we're gonna do is break it up by either alternating running and walking or varying the intensity of the runs, and that's gonna really help build our fitness. So right now, I've started with a little walk. I've walked for 30 seconds. I can now go into a jog for 30 seconds. And then once I finished my jog for 30 seconds, I could go back to walking. And if I were to just alternate that back and forth, I could go for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and it's broken this up. I don't feel as beat up on my body, and I feel like I can go a whole lot longer, which is really nice. And in those walking breaks, there's a little bit of a posture reset that happens as well, so I can string together better technique. Now, I've just turned around and now I'm facing up the hill, and if I wanted to, on another day, instead of doing run-walk intervals, I could do hill repeats. So I could start to go up this hill, run for 15, 30 seconds. Whew. Getting up here, Nora's liking the hill repeats too. And then I could go ahead and rest or walk back down. And the uphills are so great because the ground meets your feet, the impact isn't as high, it for forces really good form. I have to be tall, I have to keep my turnover a little bit higher and uh, really engage my hamstrings and my glutes. And then, the, as I said before, really the impact isn't as high. So, great way to start to challenge yourself with that higher heart rate work that will also just make running feel easier because you're like hey if i can suffer a little bit higher when i go back to those run walk intervals those will feel like an easy day now for running to truly feel good we need to practice the skill of it the form of it and yes we can all do it to some varying degree but just by drawing our attention to a few key things it can make this feel a whole lot better and we're going to start from the start with a little bit of posture so i'm going to stand up nice and tall we're going to think of a nice straight line from my ears shoulders hips knees to my ankles and what i'm going to do here is just think about how i even just initiate movement when I walk or when I run and really what that's going to be through is the act of leaning forward with our body in some way. Notice that if I just shift my hips back and forth this way, I'm going to rock heel toe and if I shift my hips forward further enough, all of a sudden my foot's going to want to step forward. It's that thing you do automatically when you walk, you don't necessarily think about it, but by drawing awareness to this, it really helps. So here, 10 heel toe walks and you notice you're going to step. So instead of just walking from here, what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to start to jog in place. And then I'm going to think about just pushing those hips forward a little bit and all of a sudden notice I've started to go forward. The other great thing about this is when I'm jogging in place, I'm already starting to think about cadence, which is my second really most important feet. Nice, light, quick feet. Notice I'm not taking big, heavy steps nice light quick ones and when I do these nice light quick ones my feet stay underneath me and it helps me out now of course there's a whole lot more to running form than just that we can go from head to tail we've got great videos on the channel for that but this is a great place to start to start to make running feel that much better now if I get a nickel for every time I heard a runner who felt like some injury came out of nowhere they were running great everything was feeling good all of a sudden their calf seized up or their hamstring or their knee started to really bother them well I would be uh, I would have a lot of nickels I would be a rich man and the reason why those runners are dealing with those injuries is because they're not doing mobility work which is why you as a new runner are going to start a couple days a week it's really important to get on a foam roller even before the body starts hurting and what this does is it starts to give you a really good sense of how your body's feeling so if I can start to for example foam roll my quads I'm gonna notice that there are gonna be some places that 
feel pretty smooth and feel pretty good. And there are gonna be some other places that, ooh, there's like a little bit of a knot there. And when I let knots go for a long time, they get worse and worse and tighter and stiffer. And then a lot of times those are kind of the prologue to an IT band or a tight knee or some other potential injury. Same thing with your calves and your feet. So by me committing to doing these regular scans, a couple minutes per leg, I get to snuff out injuries before they become a problem. So it could just be the quads, I could get my calves, it's another you know, really tight spot for a lot of runners initially. Like, oh man, I didn't even know how tight my calves were. If you've been sitting underneath your surface of awareness with really, really, really tight calves, well, if you start to add on a bunch of mileage or go a couple weeks, like which direction do you think that's gonna go? The plus side too, this helps with a little bit faster recovery so that you can even perform even better. <laughs> Now, as in all things, it's really essential to have the right gear and the right equipment to make this running a really good experience for us. And that starts from the apparel we wear. Of course, you can go out and run in anything, but it's nice to have a pair of shorts that are a little bit lighter so you don't feel like your legs are dragging with every step. A t-shirt that's non-cotton so that it all of a sudden wicks sweat a little bit better, doesn't chafe as much. Even a hat that kind of does the same thing that helps you know, pull sweat off your eyebrows and uh, doesn't get like clogged up with sweat and heavy and, and soaking on your head. Um, the most important thing probably is going to be shoes, how our feet interact with the ground. Now, the best thing to do, especially if you're starting off, is to find a middle of the road, neutral road shoe that can do a lot of things. You know, it's good on the road, it's good on the track. If you wanted to take it on a trail or fire road, you could. All these shoes are gonna have varying levels of cushion and varying levels of support. The best way to determine right shoe for you, talk to your shoe person at the store, they'll ask a few questions about your background and they'll have you try on two or three pairs. Don't just pick the first pair and walk out the door. Don't pick the, your fav the, the shoe based on the color or even by the brand. Go on comfort, let your foot lead the way here. Of course, you can go Trail shoes, you could even do shoes like Ultra that have zero drop. You could go shoes that have a little bit more cushion and bounce in them. You could do a more minimalist shoe, uh, something like this for your strength workouts and your short runs. And of course, your average middle of the row shoe would be something like this as a, just a nice place to start. But again, comfort is king. Now, if you are looking to really enjoy running and get into this, it's it's gonna be more than just the videos that you watch here in our channel. It's gonna be the regular training. So that's why we created an app at The Run Experience. If you download that app, you can get free training from us on a lot of the things we talked about in this video. So you can start strength training, you can start improving your running form, you can start to get those run workouts that aren't as boring, that, that mix things up a little bit, and then you can connect with other runners and coaches to add to answer your questions. And all you need to do is just click the link in the description of this video to get in there. Otherwise, I'm gonna send you to this great video over my shoulder on how to make running easier in five minutes. Guys, I'll see you in the next video.